Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I hope everyone is doing okay. Wow, my head is cut off. Okay. This video is, there is coming a time people won't have any food. Maybe soon, maybe not that soon. Maybe some people are already are, especially in other countries. Uh, how my grandmother's stored food, you can too. So today I was sitting in my kitchen. I went to the gym and I came home and I had bought some uh, frozen food. You guys saw it. So I'm going to be eating it. And so I had bought two of these bowls and I was eating this one and it was pretty good too. And I thought, what are you doing? These were $2. They were a good deal, but it's not happening again. It's one and a half cups food and it was more than enough. So it kind of gives you an idea of how to, uh, how much you need. And then I made this soup. This stuff's pretty good, 50 cents. And I still have one half of it left. So, it, and it's pretty good too. And then I had some tasty crackers. And I thought, you're not doing this anymore. You're smarter than this. But I am eating it down. Okay, going back to the old ways of stockpiling, survive and peace of mind and cut down shopping and excess food in the house. So, um, number one thing is buy storable food. And my grandmother used to keep it in metal trash cans. You can use food grade uh, cans, but I am just going to acquire uh, one food grain, uh, I mean one metal trash can at a time. And what she would do is she would just put the food in it and close it. And then if any insects or anything got in there, she just sprayed it. Uh, no refrigeration required and she had my grandfather built a long uh, wooden table and there were seeds spread all over that like if they would get a cantaloupe usually my grandfather grew it she go that was a good one and she would save all the seeds and they would plant it and then they would sell the cantaloupe okay so going back to the old ways first thing is flour so i like flour in these kind of of um bad so for me 25 pounds 10 is going to get me pretty far so i can make bread and i want to give you this irish soda bread recipe my grandmother made yeast bread every morning but one of my customers made soda bread and it took me a while a long while to find this recipe if you don't have buttermilk, you just use um, one cup milk and a tablespoon of vinegar or lemon, and that'll coagulate your milk. And uh, this, you can just mix this up. I usually sift all the dry ingredients a couple times. Then I cut the butter in. I add the buttermilk in a well, and then I add the raisins and bake. So, um, I'm thinking why in the world are you buying bread? It's so easy to make. And so my grandmother, the relatives were speaking to me, you guys. My grandmother would bake the bread every single morning and they weren't going to starve. Okay, beans and rice. Okay, I bought this. This was $5.00. Just buy one. Uh, how many pounds is this? Five pounds. And this is um, 50 servings. Okay, there was reports of starvation in North Korea. A quarter cup of rice can save your life. So just don't discount rice. And also just buy any kind of beans you like. Okay, in my family, we always had uh, navy beans with ham but I want to give you my husband's Aunt Nancy's lima beans. 
Uh, this, first of all, be, if you're not a lover of beans, wash beans good and check for rocks. That was my mother-in-law, always check for rocks. Once in a while, I find some cover and let soak overnight. Or else, bring your beans to a boil and then turn off the heat and cover them for an hour and then rinse them and proceed onward. Uh, the baby lima beans are probably the best, no need to soak, but I usually do soak them. So I have ham steak or bacon or sausage, uh, onion, garlic, salt, and pepper. Cook until beans are done. Add one pat of butter and evaporated milk to taste. And then serve with cornbread, butter, and honey. And then in our family, we usually had tomatoes and green onions on the side. That'll get you by. So we've got flour, beans, and rice, and then potatoes and sweet potatoes. Okay, I bought this five pounds of potatoes, and this is 103 servings. You know, I also have fresh potatoes. Of all the things, you can live on potatoes. That's why when a potato famine happens, it's bad news. Real bad news. Oatmeal. And hopefully stockpile some milk. Cornmeal for cornbread. Also with regular uh, corn on the cob, you can blanch that in boiling water. Take it out, plunge it in ice water, cool it, and then freeze it. And then uh, grits. So now on this bowl, how much would a package of instant grits have cost me with some eggs and some bacon or sausage? And it probably would have been, people weren't as sickly in the, the old days. Okay, so we have flour, beans, potatoes, or sweet potatoes, oatmeal, cornmeal. All right. Now I want to give you the Wendy's chili. Any any easy chili mix. Um, I like this one because you know once you get, you can regrow your celery easy easily. Just cut off the bottom part and put it in some water, and when it sprouts, plant it in some dirt. I have one in the backyard now, and then I use dry onions. Uh, green chilies are good if you have them. And then, you know, once you get the spices, you know, this is going to give you a good chili. So, why did I drop this? How much would some rice and some chili, even canned, how much would this cost? Not much. And it wouldn't require shopping. Uh, this is Julia Child's cornbread. I think this is the best one I've ever found. It's very easy to make. I mix all the dry ingredients. And then uh, I mix the wet ingredients. And then, you know, I just make a uh, cornbread. Today I was shopping in the thrift store for some good old-fashioned pie tins. Can't find any. Uh, you can just use one egg if you don't have that many eggs. Okay, so now think about, you know, the dry ingredients. Now, instead of spending a lot of money, because your stockpile is really for an emergency, but you want your emergency food that you could live on. So don't waste all kinds of space buying everything that you're used to. Consider cream so you can make butter. Consider milk so you can make cheese or yogurt. For that, you need lemon and vinegar, and you can make buttermilk and then eggs. So basically, you're going for cream, milk, and eggs. So that's not too expensive. You have those on hand. So if you have those items, you can use those with your beans, your potatoes. You can make some potato soup, you know. Okay, uh, now bacon or salt pork. So if you have bacon, you can make bacon fat. So you're always going to have some fat so you can live. And then you can render your meat fat so you're always going to save your meat fat. Okay, now Feature Man had a good uh, video. And what he did was he just bought the $20 bag of powdered milk from uh, Walmart. So I'm drinking down my milk and then that's how I'm going to buy milk from now on. 
But um, what I did is I bought milk really cheap uh, when it was marked way down and then I froze it. So I'm melting this and I'm going to drink it. And I bought some soy milk. So I wanna show you guys how to make tofu. So here is my soys. And I moved them inside so nothing can happen. I had a bunch of them and it was a bad seed. The gophers love them. So I have one and a half cup of unsweetened soy, but if you learn to grow soy, you're not gonna be protein deficient in some kind of famine. Uh, a lady from Japan posted um, a YouTube video. Okay, so it was one and a half cups of soy milk, and then uh, for each half cup, one half tablespoon of rice vinegar. I will be buying a big one of these. So I heated it to almost boiling and look how much it coagulated. So now for the soy, and then you drink your whey. And uh, then if you, if you don't have any meat, uh, these little things are great for getting the last bit of your stuff out of anything and for compressing your soy or your cheese. Okay, so now think about dried fruit like raisins, like dates, like figs. Those are the ones my grandmother used to get. And then think about apples. And so you can make applesauce. Here it is. And then you can can it if you want to. You can take a screen sh uh, shot. And this is strawberry jam for refrigerator jam, but you can also can that. So when the chance presents itself, if you go to a food bank and you're given apples or you're given um, strawberries more than you can eat, you're gonna can them so you won't be running out of food. Raisins, peaches, pears, apples, apricots, grapes. I'm trying to grow. Uh, nothing got my grapes on my grapevine yet. It takes three years for a grapevine to mature to the point that you can uh, get any uh, grapes. So this is like uh, buttermilk. You can use this just like buttermilk. So I will just heat this, no wasting, and I will drink that. Okay, so here's for the cooked pears or any cooked fruit or apricots or peaches or plums, whatever you get. All you need to make jam is sure gel. I buy it at Walmart. It's very easy to do. Okay, so now all right, you need sugar, salt, yeast, and then think about this. Okay, Ellen's abundant life on less. Her mother is 90 something years old and she had little pots of like tomato plants. I go, anyone could do that on the balcony, including me. And so I'm gonna be growing stuff. So here it is. And so what you do in the morning or at late at night when you should be in bed and you're not, so for the Mexican garden, you guys remember the story. There was an old man and he came up to this young girl and he said, ma'am, your daughter is starving. He gave her a bag of beans, a bag of rice, and he told her to plant a garden. So the garden probably was tomatoes, onions, squash, and peppers. Okay, you can dehydrate or can easily these are four. So go to Ellen's Abundant Life on less and check out the way they do things. Okay, coffee, tea, and then in my family, we always had ham, which comes in handy if you should ever have to eat beans. Japan is very cold. This would taste good. So then the same thing happened with this old lady in the soy. An old man came up and told them, it's a famine, plant soy. 
So what needs to be learned, now a lot of them put this in, um, in um, what is that stuff, cheesecloth, and, and you could, but uh, you, if you're making soft soy, you can just press it and if any if any comes out just put it back on top and look at this nice uh pile of it takes a minute for it to uh to drip and then just put it in the uh refrigerator i'm going to put it in my little little container okay so okay so ham and beef easy to salt pork is expensive five dollars for a little one but i'm going to be buying some start saving your jars and saving everything so here is an example I'm going to put stuff in those you know if hard times come here's one of my little spoons i'm going to use this in my tea party stuff so i'm going through everything i own and uh I am saving everything that I could possibly use and uh, then I'm probably gonna get rid of the rest of it. I'm getting ready for the holidays. I'm getting ready for whatever might happen. Okay. Okay, there is, um, there was a prophecy. A man was standing on a high hill with the Lord Jesus and they were looking down on the ocean and a tsunami was pulling out and all the people were totally unaware. And the man turned to the Lord and said, what will happen to the people? And the Lord said, perhaps I will save some of them. Okay, I heard a prophecy channel and they said the sea is the people of the world. And so then I had a... Um, a very bad dream and it was a man on a high hill the people were down in the by the ocean the tsunami was pulling out but the Lord was not there so you might go well you know we're, we're all doomed anyway so well, let's just think it through here okay so the ocean depicts the world think about the devastations Noah's flood Okay, I think the, the main thing about uh, the flood was it was to do with uh, the animals were even corrupt. The people were corrupt, the animals were corrupt, and uh, the world was destroyed. Then think about Sodom and Gomorrah. So what we're doing is we're comparing and contrasting when these um, judgments fell, and we're looking for that today because... It'll, it says it'll be as in the day of Noah. Okay. And then the plagues that were visited on Egypt. Okay. So um, during the, uh, the plagues visited on Egypt, uh, the, the plagues were a lot to do with idolatry. And the Hebrews didn't receive the plague. So the, say it this way. If you stay to the good, you know, chances are you're going to get by somehow. You're going to say, okay, maybe this week I'll buy 10 pounds of, uh, here's the sugar I bought. I bought it in four pound bags and I bought 10 pounds. Okay, so now, so we're looking for um, circumstances like Noah. Also, I think the Tower of Babel uh, was destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah and plagues visited on Egypt. Okay, think about these plagues. Disease, intense heat, drought, deadly hailstorms, wars, rumors of wars, famine, false prophets, pestilence like, say it, a contagion, epidemic disease with no cures. So we're gonna get disease that's gonna be uncurable. False prophets, uh, the thing is, is people are going to be deceived by these false prophets. Another thing is these plagues are going to come. And just like in uh, the plague visited on Egypt, for a little while they would be good, and then they would go right back to their bed. 
they forget. <coughs> Earthquakes. Um, infectious outbreak, disease, contagion, epidemic, and disease of sores. Infections that are virulent, very contagious, devastating, and three days of darkness. And I always tell my son, if it gets, if we get the three days of darkness, do not go outside and try to feel your way to my house. Just stay in the house. Uh, also, there's, uh, we'll go to the alien thing real quick, and then death. So the death isn't going to be normal. It's going to be devastation all over uh, the world. Let's see if I gave you all the recipes. Oh, here's the pickles. So this is for refrigerator pickles. Wash cucumbers good with water. Put cucumbers in a bowl of water and sprinkle with salt. Let set a few minutes. Wash good in water. Peel most of the skin off. I like to, uh, like uh, things they say watch out for pesticide is um, strawberries, and uh, something else that we, but anything with a peel, you know, to remove most of the insecticide, put thinly sliced cucumbers and onion in a bowl, sprinkle with salt and garlic powder to taste. Heat two cups vinegar, two cups water, one tablespoon pickling spice, and one half cup sugar. I get the sp pickling spice at Walmart. Put cucumbers, boil, boil this water, Put cucumber in a jar, cover with vinegar, store in refrigerator, or you can uh, water bath can them. So those are going to help you. Uh, let me give you feature. Now remember, Feature Man had the big bags of powdered milk, and let me give you his coleslaw. And also there's sauerkraut to be made, and I have my potato salad next to it. But this is really good and cheap, and he says it. So you have cabbage, carrots, tomatoes. You have mayonnaise, relish, sweet relish, and ketchup. And then for potato salad, potatoes, eggs, and onions, mayonnaise, relish, and mustard. Uh, I put pickle juice as well. Okay, so uh, I want to mention the, the, the alien thing real quick, and then I'm done. Okay, this was a good one. Two small mummies were located in Mexico and they had the elongated heads. And uh, they had three fingers. And uh, one set, one of the scientists, which I, first of all, they didn't really strike me as aliens, but I don't know what they were. One said, how do we know they are from outer space? So I thought, yeah, that's true. They could be, you know, somewhere like under the earth, you know? So, okay, so now, we had the blue moon recently, and we're not expected to get another one until 2029, October 20, 20th, possible alien invasion, a waxing crescent moon, a hunter moon. This was when they would hunt the deers, and it rises 50 minutes later. So this is supposed to usher in, um, um, what do you want to call it, it the aliens. You can put some salt on your uh, soy, but it doesn't need it. The thing about this you really want to remember is this is protein. You know, if you don't have any meat, God forbid, this, you can put this on your uh, fried rice. Here it is, see it? Okay, so then, okay, so October 1st. The day before Halloween was War of the Worlds. So if they're going to, uh, several weird things have happened the day before Halloween, but War of the Worlds. So if they were going to, you know, pull a fake alien invasion, it'd mostly be then. And then for some reason, it's some moon. Um, also, the Hunter Moon is going to be an orange moon, November 1st. So um, that is, is... I wouldn't step nice worried about the aliens. If they are aliens, okay, I want to mention my blouse. Okay, you know, I've been going to the gym. So uh, today I was at the gym and I go, wow, you know, my blouses are all beat up. It's only been two weeks, you guys. I have clothes for five years. Those days are gone. So this particular blouse smells pretty bad. 
like some smelly guy's uh, gym clothes. And what I think happened is they, they don't wash their uh, gym clothes, so I am throwing this one in to go to the gym. So um, today I went and I thought I need to find more gym clothes. My gym clothes are getting all beat up and it's only been two weeks. So naturally I couldn't find anything. So if you need things and you want to shop at a thrift store, you kind of got to shop all the time to find stuff because today there was nothing. Okay, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all.